welcome to what what about books the future in five years podcast right hurdy right <laughs> heard real excited yeah. about you changing the name but yeah. uh, uh i do want to read uh beth uh sent remember beth is in the pharmaceutical world and she had a the certification that she was a certified specialist, some type for some medical thing. And she had uh, her entire group, don't know how big the group is, but it's a nationwide group. Uh, she used the habit stacking that Claire, uh, the author, talks about here in the book to complete her specialist training. She was first one in her work group to get it done. I uh, told the group that uh, she said, I stacked the work, uh, I stacked the reading and the homework into her reading at bedtime. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, 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 that's right. She reads a book. She reads before she goes uh, to bed to sleep. She started doing this before she would uh, uh, read the book. So it was done in one month, had a two month time limit. Um, and uh, found out her boss uh, also loves uh, Atomic Habits, Gold Star for me, she says. So anyway, um, yeah, I've uh, I've been using it uh, for a couple of things. Anybody else? Anybody have a something they've used it for? I think I'm just refining, you know, basically an aspect of uh, focus and uh, emails, phone calls, newsletters, my marketing program. Yeah, falling into more of a, uh, a productive rhythm and not just uh, worrying myself out trying to do too many things. Do the focused, more har, uh, higher ROI activities. Uh, George mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, um, maybe last week, that he realized that he, you know, some of this is pretty intuitive. He had intuitive started using some habit stacking, and that, um, but it's made made him more aware of some of that. Tammy, now have you read the book before? I have. I've done it on Audible, yeah. and so for me, well, I love the book. Um, one of the things I realized is that for me, for habit stacking was um, being purposeful in my mornings, because once I started working outside after pandemic opened, I'd gotten used to habits like reading my Bible first thing in the morning, walking, but then I got overwhelmed. And so I had to go back to the basics of one habit at a time, right? Like, like someone reads for before bed for me, it's in the morning. Um, so I liked how it was very simple, right? Start with one thing, not 20. So going back to the basics right now again to begin to start habits back again. <laughs> yep, good, good. Um, I went out of town Thursday morning, left uh, real early in the morning uh, and was gone for four days. And uh, got out of sync with my mornings, and um, it's been hard, you know. Uh, yesterday and this morning, uh, getting back into a routine, you know, not tired from the trip, just all of a sudden took a break from that routine. So, uh, you know, this morning uh, was just I don't want to get up, and like Jocko Willick says, get up in a way. So, um, <laughs> We're on chat. Me, it was realist when I had to dust off my treadmill. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's a sign. So instead of thinking I had to do three miles, it was like, just do a mile, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. don't let the dust collect. Yeah. And I was embarrassed this weekend when I had to dust it. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, I want to talk some more next time we see each other. I want to talk some more about your meeting with Jeff Galloway. Uh, uh, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, guys, we're in. Um, chapter nine, pretty interesting. This is really, I, I was just, uh, I remember when I listened to this book earlier in the year, um, I 
listen to this chapter twice at least. Um, any thoughts before we start dissecting some of the pieces? I thought he did a good yeah. job of breaking down the influencers into three groups. And uh, then, you know, I was reading uh, First Peter chapter one this morning, talking about uh, the influences of the world uh, versus the Holy Spirit. And so it's interesting, uh, you know, all these things are very accurate, very true. And the uh, bottom line is you just got to watch uh, who you're being influenced by and what they're telling you. Yeah. yeah the, uh, we'll come back to this, but yeah, those three groups, the close, the many, and the powerful. What about the story right up front about the, this guy, this Hungarian man who had um, the idea, he, he believed in this idea so strongly, he wanted to test it with his own children. And he didn't have children yet. The guys that, uh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, what do you think about the that? The chess players? Yeah, yeah the, the, the chess, chess players. players. And, um, he started writing to a lady and um, obviously knew something about her. and She was a teacher and... and um, also believe that with proper instruction, anyone could advance their skills. Pretty interesting. Very. So if you saw the uh, Venus, uh, the Williams sisters movie, I think it was put out in the middle of the winter, kind of along the same lines. The guy focused on the kids and their tennis skills. King Richard, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to see it. I want to see that. Yeah. It was well done. I think he got an Academy Award for that. Yeah, that's when he slapped that, that comedian that night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did he? Was that, are you talking about Will Smith? Yeah, that's when he slapped. Yeah. Um, he was the father figure in the movie. Oh, okay. Any other That's correct. just random thoughts about the chapter? I just don't do random, Danny. Well, no, you just did, Gary. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Hey, Danny, what's the chapter? I don't have my book in front of me. What's the chapter title? And Give me some bullet points in the summary. Uh, yeah, the chapter title is... Uh, the role of family and friends in shaping your habits. Right. Yeah. So let me just kind of well, the, go ahead, Gary. Yeah. So one of the things that, you know, if you go back to your past and you look at the styles, we're talking about this group influence, you know, uh, the guys had longer hair, uh, bell bottoms, the ladies had the long straight hair. You know, there's all these different kinds of things. I remember in high school, somebody started wearing a military camo baseball cap. Uh, like when I was a junior, senior, they go everywhere, Hardy. I thought it was just in my school. but No, it's, I, I never heard of it. It's just shaking like my head because it's going, wow. 80% of the guys at school within three months were wearing camo baseball caps <laughs> because it was cool. And you graduated what, 1971? Oh, 62, something like No, 70. 70. I'm 70 on 70 this year. Yeah, I was trying to be nice. The, no, uh, you weren't. <laughs> the, um, yeah, so I remember it's that hard. high school. It, I, I was going to say. I, I remember seeing white shoes, loafers, and I had to have a pair of white loafers. Can you imagine? <laughs> mine were red. Mine were red, white, and blue. They had a red, white, and blue one. It looked like a bowling shoe too, and you, you could wear it with a white. You could wear it with a white belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of those, one of those big collared, uh, silky shirts. Yeah. I mean, you're styling. Hey, did you ever wear a white tie, Hurdy? Uh, no. I wore mine until it had so much uh, gravy and grease and <laughs> chili dip on it. I had to throw it away. Yeah. Moving on. Chapter summary. Moving I'm on. Gonna I'm going to jump to the chapter summary. Please do. Uh, and then back up from there. 
the culture we live in determines which behaviors are attractive to us. Yeah. I'm just trying to be more random. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just on the phone a few minutes ago with a man named, uh, well, a, a guy that's become a friend, uh, Adam, and he just moved here after 15 years as a missionary in the Dominican Republic. And um, uh, one of the things he's, he's been here for about three months, uh, just closed on his house a couple of weeks ago. And he's been in the mission field for 25 years, 15 years in Dominican Republic. And he said, and, and it's actually one of the things they're getting used to. They got two boys, uh, second and, and sixth grade, and just dealing with the, the culture and the behaviors. So um, second bullet point under chapter summary, we tend to adapt habits that are praised and approved of by our culture because with a strong desire to fit in and belong to the tribe. We tend to imitate the habits of three social groups, what uh, Gary had mentioned, um, of the close, with the family and friends, the many, the tribe, and the powerful, those with status and prestige. Uh, bullet point number four, one of the most effective things you can do to build better habits is to join a culture where one, your desired habit is the normal behavior, and two, you already have something in common with the group. I'll come back to something on that in a few minutes. But the normal beha behavior of the tribe often overpowers the desired behavior of the individual. Most days, we'd rather be wrong with the crowd than be right by ourselves. And bullet point number six, if a behavior can get us approval, respect, and praise, we find it attractive. Now, I wanted to disagree with some of that, but just I sat back and, and, uh, and thought about it, and I go, you know what? Um, I'm you know, afraid I've been guilty of more of that than I care to admit. Comments? We're, we're losing you. You got to sit up closer to your mic. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, something going on with. Uh, I'm. Uh, Try not there to you go. my desk chair over there. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yep. I think I covered it up. Uh, well, comments, if you if you look at deeper commentaries on sports teams or a sales team, they'll typically say, this guy has more value because he's a leader. Uh, he sets a tone. He may not be hitting 300 or stealing 30 bases or, you know, uh, be the best outfielder, but he brings a lot to the clubhouse. And the Texas Rangers just did that. They sent a guy down that was batting exact same amount as the rookie, but the rookie was a young guy and wasn't an influencer. Mm. So those things happen in every culture, uh, even sales teams. They're looking for a guy that sets a tone of uh, attitude of productivity. Yeah, well, um, maybe think about, and I'm not going to mention the, the ball player or the team's name, but uh, didn't know him personally, knew who he was. He knew me, his dad knew me, uh, but uh, we didn't know him that personally, but a boy that, uh, was ranked number one or two in the country as a quarterback, got recruited by a college team. Dad had a lot of influence over him. This was 12 years ago or so. Dad had a lot of influence over him. Uh, kid was just as solid, thoughtful. Then he goes, he goes to this college team. And by the end of his first year, he ended up starting his first year because of an injury of the starting quarterback. And the, the team influence and, the, and some looseness of the coaching, the coaches, he didn't perform near as well, transferred two years later, is still in the pros, did go to the pros, but has never 
perform what we all thought he would. And personally, I think it's, it, it, uh, it was the college team that he went to play for and the lackadaisical, um, just the whole influence of that team. I don't know if that made sense in all that or not. So Yeah. So his surrounding that kept him from being successful, he's, he surrounded himself without what he was surrounded before. It changed the whole environment and everything. Yeah, yeah something happened. Uh, yeah. Something definitely happened. So we're about the seductive uh, pull of social norms. Herds or uh, humans are herd animals. The customs and practices of life in society sweep us along. I can say that you know, about six weeks ago, we started our team, we decided that our sales team, our loan officers, if they were going to stay on the team, if they weren't closing a certain amount of business, um, then they uh, would put some requirements on them. And one is that they had to come to right now, for instance, they're in a power hour with um, – uh, with with Brett Hall that's on our team in Austin and where they're smiling they're prepping for the power hour out of their CRM they do that for 30 minutes and then they start making calls to get appointments and um, so that's a requirement they're encouraged to call in on uh, my check-in my, I have an 8am uh, check-in call that's available to anybody uh, on our team or not uh, about 50% of the people that call in are not on my team, but it's just a check-in. What you're going to do, we have an 8 a.m. call and a 4.30 call, and people can call into either one of those to state their intention. And I can tell you that those that call in uh, to that call three times a week, they're on that power hour. Their whole mindset is changing uh, about making sales calls. Every, anyway, when, when I was reviewing this book this morning or this chapter really thought about that um it's got underlined one of the most effective things you can do to build better habits is to join a culture where your desired behavior is a normal behavior oh i remember what i was going to say they're doing that you know i'm a, I, this is my i started that daily twice a day call where i state my intentions for the day and I have a scorecard that I use. And I say my intentions for the day and how I'm doing week to day, how I did last week. I stayed on Mondays. And having all that going on around me and that culture and what we're doing with our team has changed my entire mindset. So I, I've been doing this since June 1st. And uh, my whole attitude, call reluctance I had has not gone away, but it's all changed. Tammy, you're a big smile and dollar, aren't you? <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah, the class that you uh, that that uh, uh, we had last week. I, did you say you 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 called and invited forty seven agents? I did. Yeah, um, but I, you know, I don't like it. I would be lying to you if I said I did. But what I was telling Danny for me and is that one, I can avoid the things I don't want to do. I can stay really busy and ignore that, but it's important. But what I loved about last week is I put Danny and his company, the Impact Leadership Group in front of me. So my calls were easier because I was inviting them to their event versus telling people who I was. So I felt like when I put someone and that's kind of how I run my life anyway. But when you put someone else in front of you, then the doors open, I felt. So then I began to have conversations instead of feeling like I was cold calling. Um, and it's a habit. In fact, I have a tracker I do now. And every day I try to do 10. Um, and it's be trying to become a habit, right? Like it has to be in front of me. Um, I do it but I enjoyed it too. 
And then I felt like I was able to be used in some other ways as well through conversation. So it was, but I would lie if I told you I enjoyed it, <laughs> but it's getting better in my mindset. Yeah. My mindset is changing. So. Yeah. Well, Gary, I have a question for you because that's what you have done for a living for a number of years, but you've mainly called you know, other companies would hire you to call on their behalf. So you're calling, right. talking to somebody about a different, another company. Is that different than for you than calling to talk about yourself? Uh, yes, I, I agree with Tammy. That's that's very common. The thing that uh, you have to do is convince yourself that what you're supplying, providing, or the service is of great value to your customers. And then when you're convinced it's just not an ego ride, but you have a genuine service to provide, it makes that call a lot easier. But at first, it's awkward because it sounds somewhat egotistical. And then you have to really dig down and say, no, I've got something that can really help people. Good. Hey, Tammy, have you read the book 7L? The Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer, M-A-H-E-R. No, sir. M-A-H-E-R. M-A-H-E-R. He's a, he's been recognized at least twice by the National Association of Realtors introduced on stage as the number one most referred realtor in the United States. And um, uh, so some of is 7L. And, and one thing he talks about in there, uh, uh, I'm on uh, one of his live uh, events once a month or so, uh, but he, he constantly promotes it, it, what you do is you call people to invite them to another event. And that's nice. what you're saying, Tammy, is right out of his, uh, right out of his book. And he has the communication pyramid. You can Google, uh, 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 communication pyramid and 7L communication pyramid. Click on images and you'll see that uh, that there. And uh, my uh, my scorecard is built uh, primarily uh, points around that. So um, so so let's brainstorm here a minute. Uh, on page 117, make your habits even more attractive. You can take this strategy one step further. Join a culture where one, your desired behavior is a normal behavior. And two, you already have something in common with the group. What's something we could brainstorm about and how that would work? How we would. Restate your question one more time, please. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, just right off the bottom of page 117. Well, what's what's a habit? Maybe somebody's got one that let's just brainstorm around a habit that that somebody would want to develop, and how we would use these two points. So. Uh, so you want to develop X habit. So what's a culture where that desired behavior is normal? And two, you already have something in common with the group or, or just an example. I mean, he gives an example here uh, and I'm trying to remember it is uh, uh, a, a, this something called nerd. That this guy named Steve Cam runs a company called Nerd Fitness, which helps nerds, misfits, and mutants lose weight, get strong, and get healthy. His clients include video game lovers, movie fanatics, and the average Joes who want to get in shape. Many people feel out of place the first time they go to the gym or try to change their diet. But if you're already similar to the other members of the group in some way, they, you're mutual, uh, a mutual love of Star Wars, Star Wars, that change becomes more appealing because it feels like something people like you already do. Hey, I, I didn't, I kind of got that when I read it. Don't get it any better right now. When I read it the first time, don't get any better right now. 
uh, but he says that our identity is singular. You're a reader, you're a magician, you're an athlete. But when you join a book club or a band, you become a reader, a magician, or a cyclist. So what's it? I'm trying to think of a, a, a habit. Anybody got a habit that they're wanting to develop? Then how you would. So let me give you an example. Um, our pastor at our church gave a sermon about the fundamentals of Christian behavior and said, here's, here's the way that it really works. And the only way you're going to change is if in your Bible, you're, you're in your Bible every day, you're reading, uh, you're, you're in a, an affinity group, you're plugged in, you're serving. So he gave about five principles of uh, the expectations and the way to change your life is through those five points of conduct. And so we know there are a lot of people there that are plugged into that, uh, that are really practicing those disciplines to, work, uh, to walk a more uh, spiritual life instead of a worldly-centered uh, life. So I, I would think, Danny, that, um, you know, the first thing is we have to make personal choices, right, regardless of what groups and things we're in to benefit ourselves. However, if we're in groups with common things that we're trying to accomplish, we're going to be stronger because that group's going to support us. And and I think that's how we get to create good habits is if we like this mastermind, if you're in it long enough, you really do start learning principles to apply. If it, it, And so the idea of making a personal choice to be here is to have it. And then the second habit on that is deciding to implement what I'm hearing on here and come up with ways to, to, to make an action plan or strategy toward that. So I think group, but it can work the opposite way, can it? So these gangs that run around these cities and doing their bad things, right, are influenced by the way that they are uh, influenced and how they get credits for what they do in a bad way, right? So the, the culture can really change a person negative it still comes back to personal choice and responsibility on a person how what roads are going to go right the group helps strengthen that yeah you just made me think about i was up in arkansas with my at, at my mother's for a few days and my nephew he's 27 his son is three and my nephew's a big duck hunter and of course deer but duck and also, and, you know, uh, they're out, they've got cameras set up out in the woods for, for, uh, uh, for these ducks fly in. They got cameras set up, you know, like ring type cameras. They got them set up, uh, you know, for the deer. And my three year old nephew, or no, five year old nephew is showing me, uh, uh, wanting to see his dad's phone to show me pictures of the deer. Uh, and he dresses in camo a lot. And yeah, I never did that with my kids. And uh, so, uh, it's, it, again, it's just that culture and what you're hanging out with. So a funny little story. Uh, when I had a like a two or three-year-old daughter, she was old enough to toddle around and stuff, and I was playing softball. So I'd get out in the backyard and throw the softball up against our brick house and it would come back at me and I would field it. And of course I would do like I was pitching from the stretch hurdy and just lift my leg up a little, throw the ball. Kaboom, you got it. You didn't pause for a half, second and a half. You, there you go, man, takes his base. Anyway, so we saw Jennifer in the backyard picking up her leg and slinging her arm. And we're going, what is that kid doing? And then it finally dawned on me, she had watched me throwing the softball against the back of the house. And so, you know, that that may be irrelevant in an adult world, but people are watching you. Yeah. So, so Danny, do you think when you bring your people in, in the, in your mortgage business and you have them start by emulating the, the scorecard that works, right? Then they eventually, you hope they pick up the habit, correct? In other words, you're emulating the behavior. We used to call that in counseling, fake it till you make it kind of thing. But, uh, because that was part of the steps. 
right? So I imagine emulation or copying, like Gary just said, is part of building into a good habit too, right? Yeah, speaking of that, I mean, we start off right off the bat. Uh, 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 you know, somebody comes on the team and, you know, we have our Wednesday sales training and everybody states their their points for the previous week. Our, our week starts on Monday, goes through Sunday, and, you know, your points for the previous week. And you can tell somebody comes in, they're just kind of playing with the, uh, and then they start getting serious uh, uh, as, as the weeks go along and they, uh, they're not faking it as much. They're, they're really trying to drill down. Uh, you know, we, we ask questions, uh, about, uh, the idea of a scorecard. It helps you evaluate and correct. And so we evaluate and correct and talk about, uh, you know, okay, were your points, uh, on that pyramid or your points on uh, the top two? Are you in the top three levels or are they down in the, the social media email level? Where, where are your points coming from? You've got to, uh, uh, you know, you get five points for a, uh, for a, a phone call, seven points for a five to seven points for a one on one meeting people, different types of points for, for different things. So, um, you know, back to the, uh, the groups now, Tammy. You're a. Would you say that you're that you run or you're a runner? Um. Well, in Jeff Galloway's term, I am a runner, and and I think that talking about conformity, many people go, if you walk, you're not a runner. But I, that was one of the things I had to overcome. Like my, I found a group of people. That that's is that they ran like me, which we all finished half marathons just like the runners, and we somehow thought we weren't runners. But you, I grouped myself with people that were like runners, which gave me the ability to continue on had I been defeated, right? Because people can go, Oh, you can't do that if you can't run a full mile without a 15 minute or 15 second break, you're not a runner. So when we're talking about these habits, right? I, back then I could have easily given up. I did many times actually until I found my group and then I ran 13 half marathons. Yep. So, oh, wow. right. Yeah. And I finished just like everyone else did. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And, right? and, uh, regardless yeah. of my height and my weight. So. Yeah. 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 There is that yeah, whole thing around the run, walk method, run, walk, run method of Jeff's, but, uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, I consider myself a runner, though I don't. Um, I, you know, I did finish 19 miles of a marathon back in February, but I just ran my first mile without stopping about uh, three weeks ago in probably 15 years. And um, uh, so, yeah, I know exactly what you're, uh, you know, what you're saying is that. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't, my purpose of the question, and he talks about here, is that with groups, you become not a, uh, what was it, you become, um, you don't ride cycles, you're a cycler, okay, uh, so there's different things that make you that, it, it, uh, it, it comes along to your, you know, you know, with your identity, so. Um, is this the. Is this the book that talks about, because I know this chapter talked a little bit about our habits. It says we don't choose our earliest habits. We um, imit imitate them, yep. right? And I think one of the things, is this the book, I read a lot of it, where it was talking about as children were learned to stand up in the shower, but yet there was really no reason that we had to stand up in the shower, because if you laid down in the shower, you'd still just get as clean. I don't remember that. That's interesting. And that so... I think it's this book, but it was talking about how we do things just because our parents or our family, but then when you do something different, people find you weird. So like if people <laughs> saw you laying in the shower, they would think that you're kind of crazy, right? But the truth yeah. is we all get clean. And I think this book talks about standing out in a crowd and kind of being right to yourself. 
at least I thought it was this book where it was like, sometimes doing what you feel is right or whatever, or breaking those molds feel odd and people judge you, but to stand right is still the right thing. Not just because we, you know what I mean? Like, so at my age, if I wanted to lay down in my shower, I should be able to without feeling that it's wrong because there's no wrong about it. It's just breaking a habit. I could have sworn it was this one, but might've been, um, um, I read, I read a lot of them, but that was one of them. Makes me kind of think yeah, of this. I, I just did a word search on my digital version, and I don't see that there's uh, there's quite a few about shower. Look on about 10, 12 comments about shower. Be careful but... what you search. <laughs> What's that? Be careful, Be careful what, what you what search. You search. Yeah, really. yeah. One heck of a response. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm right. in the book. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not on the open internet. I'm in the book, but uh, yeah, I don't see. Okay, well, that's kind of, well, so I guess it's irrelevant, but, but it is kind of, I feel like talking about our earliest habits, how they're developed, right? That yeah. we just, he, he does talk about, as he notes, the perfect time to clean the toilet is right before you wash yourself in a way. And uh, so it's interesting there about that. That's a, uh, uh, so, uh, so he watched down the, what he's got cleans the toilet while the shower is warming up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I brush my teeth, and uh, so um, so anyway. But uh, I got me thinking about book I read. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to read that. The um, um, Sonny's reading a book right now. We've been discussing called performance habits. That's uh, okay. that's pretty interesting. Um, I think it's it was kind of like the conforming thing where I feel like we do things just because our parents did or whatever, and and then we teach our children that they can't go outside those windows, which causes them frustration. When really are those roles are just the way you preferred them, right? Yeah. And doesn't mean it right or wrong, and, and it limits people for being them their self, but. I got to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, this uh, uh, imitating the many, uh, won't go into it, but that whole exercise conforming to social norm where this psychologist uh, began to, uh, an experiment with the, the subject would come into a, a room with a group of strangers. The subject didn't know that the other participants were actors planted by the researcher and instructed to deliver script answers to certain questions. And uh, uh, so, you know, that was really, really interesting. And uh, um, so, so Danny, so uh, a golf story. So your boy from Arkansas, John Day, who, you know, is on the pro tour, uh, crazy guy. But the fact of the matter is he never had a professional coach. He watched the comics strips of Jack Nicklaus techniques in the newspaper and learned how to play golf by emulating what Jack Nicklaus told people to do, have the steps for certain swing techniques, whether it's in a sand trap, from fairway, from a driving range, and that's how he learned how to play golf. So, you know, there is there is ways to form habits by emulation, right? But I still think that, it, and then you go out and you have to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And what's the old saying? I, I, I don't have top of my head, but I think you have to do something X amount of times before it actually becomes part of your normal routine. Yeah. Like, you know, I walk that 100,000 steps a week. So my routine in the morning is to get up and do quadricep, hamstring, and Achilles work before I ever walk out the front door. In other words, I'm stretching the, the, the body. So that is just what used to be a pain. I didn't want to get up, get the tape out, start pulling and stretching. Now I just get up and do it. So that's converted to a habit, but it took a bunch of time to do it consecutively before it just became something I get up and do now, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Another observation, too, as you've changed companies or maybe made a slight career shift in your uh, working years, uh, you'll find yeah. different cultural biases for every company and expectations. 
And uh, they don't sit you down and say, here's our culture. They might apply to you and say, oh, everybody's highly valued. Uh, they all say that. But you'll find out from your peer group uh, what's acceptable, what's not, that sort of thing. Yeah. And it takes a while. True. Yeah. Truth. Guys, um, finishing up early today, not as much, not as many people on here. Um, actually, besides Tammy, we had two other uh, new people that were joining us that uh, obviously didn't. Uh, but uh, next week, we're going to talk about how to find and fix the causes of bad habits. Uh, interesting chapter there, of course, also. Any parting comments? Watch, watch who you emulate. Yeah, it, you know, my whole thing around in five years, this book is, uh, you know, in you know, five years, we're going to be the same as we are today, except for what we read, what we listen to, what we watch, and who we hang out with. So um, it kind of proves that point that Zig Ziglar said, you know, 50 years ago, uh, wasn't that long ago, probably 45 years ago, the first time I heard him say it. Mike, any parting words of wisdom? No, I enjoy this every week. So, I mean, I've been, I've been working a lot on myself and I still got some bad habits I have to overcome. I, at home, I did, I did really well, like I told y'all before. But my change in habits, end up, I end up losing my keys, end up losing my other ring, and so I can't find them anymore. So I, I don't know if y'all recall, I stopped putting them in my spot in the kitchen because my wife would complain. I started taking it to my, my closet and, you know, removing my <laughs> items there. Well, now I lost my set of keys. I have never found them since three weeks ago. Are you kidding? No, no. <laughs> okay, that's not how this is supposed to work, Mike. I know, I know. But <laughs> that's, I was, I was, that. That's next week. <laughs> yeah, just, that's next week, Mike. I've been working on I've been working on stuff, you know, also communicating with people, following up, um, working on, I mean, with me, like in real estate, I love doing real estate. It's just very hard. And 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 the way people don't understand what our roles are, what the title company does, what's to be expected. You know, there's all so many moving parts, and a lot of customers don't understand that, you know. Like for Tammy, uh, I had a customer think that Tammy would go and call his his uh, his mortgage company and set up his his banking information for his escrow account. He said, "Why do I have to do that if I'm paying you?" It doesn't make any sense, <laughs> you know. I'm like, oh my god, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hear some doozies. There, uh, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did hear a, a a read a really good quote from Ziegler. You're talking about, you know, attitude and the way you impact people and things of that nature. I said, you know, aren't you concerned that your exuberance and your upbeat attitude and all that kind of stuff are going to run people off? And he goes, you're going to get far more people to come to you and use your services by being upbeat and uh, kind of on the loud side and, and forceful uh, instead of being you know, negative and a jerk uh, are just being so low key, but it takes you seriously. So yeah. outweighed the positives on the whole culture follower thing versus what you might lose. Yeah, amen, amen to that. 